Uh, my name is Paula. I'm a software developer that does marketing. And today we are going to talk about the world of Web3 marketing. Uh, so Web3 is so exciting. There is so many projects popping up every day and even more trends in Web3 marketing. Uh, so it can be hard to stand out from the crowd and it can be even harder to keep up with all these trends without losing your project's integrity. Uh, so that is what we will talk about today. And for start, I wanted to show you a video. So yeah, let's watch it together, if it works. Good, Good morning, morning doctor. doctor. Good morning. We got your ether scan back and unfortunately we found something. What is it, Doc? You've been diagnosed with ETH maximisis. You're in ETH maxi. In ETH maxi. Mm -hmm. Doc, that's not possible. It's okay. He's going to take some time to process this. He can only handle 10 alphabets per second. He has been really slow lately. Is he allergic to anything? To any wallet that isn't MetaMask. Allergic to good UI. Any difficulties while digesting? He couldn't digest the fact that Austin Federa went on bankless. But is he going to be okay, doctor? I'm going to need to run some more tests. What do you see here, Nathan? What are you doing? What? I'm just booking a cab with a decentralized application on Ethereum Layer 1. See? It's five minutes away. He's seeing fully functioning consumer apps and white papers. That's stage three of ETH Maximizes. What does that mean, doctor? Do you see all of this gas in his transactions? It's only a matter of time till he gets wrecked. There must be some cure. We can reduce gas if we use Wormhole and bring him into the Solana ecosystem. Exposure to real apps that actually work can cure him. Uh, <laughs> so a while back, uh, gas fees on Ethereum spiked and Solana's marketing team uh, saw that as a great opportunity. Uh, some people even say that Solana has better UI and UX. Uh, so they made what I would say a perfect Dijon style video. It was funny, it was a little bit cringe, uh, it had, uh, you know, some memes from the ecosystem. Uh, so yeah, I think they really did a good job. But some would say this style of video is not something that a serious enterprise would do for their audience. Uh, still, I think this is good because this video went very viral. And even for new people that are not in crypto, it explains in an easy to understand way uh, why Solana's advantage over Ethereum. So I think they surely got some, uh, you know, some token action from this. So what exactly is uh, a DGEN? Oh. Yeah, so DGEN also stands in crypto for degenerate gambler. But if you didn't know, in Croatia, you can also call somebody a DGEN if it's like a stupid guy, you know, bothering you. Uh, so yeah, what, uh, what are some characteristics of DGENs? First of all, they have a very high tolerance for risk. Uh, they allow high risk, high reward. Uh, they uh, like uh, highly volatile projects. Uh, often they are driven by community. So they are not making their investment decisions based on maybe tokenomics and, put, uh, and uh, roadmap. They're making their investment decisions based on the hype. If it's on Twitter trending, then that is what I will invest in. Even though if you are a real degen, you are not investing when something is on Twitter trending, you are selling them. Uh, but this, uh, this presentation isn't about investment advice. Uh, and lastly, and most importantly, what characterizes uh, degen culture is definitely memes. Uh, the first thing that comes to someone's mind when you think of memes and crypto, it is obviously meme coins. Uh, but uh, digital culture goes beyond that. Uh, one good example is NFTs and the NFT craze that happened in the last uh, bull market. Uh, so for example, NFTs are a highly volatile uh, investment opportunity, so favorite for DGENs. And if you are smart, you can maybe flip them for profit, participate in lending and borrowing. Or if you are a true DGEN, you will get a CryptoPunk or a board Ape and make it your profile picture NFT. Uh, and, you know, show that you are in, in the game, that you have skin in the game. But 
uh, memes and digital culture isn't uh, just for uh, isn't just for meme coins and NFTs. Uh, even serious projects can participate in it. Uh, one of my favorite examples that was pretty recent uh, was during Nvidia AI conference. Uh, so near CEO Ilya, he visited the panel with uh, Nvidia CEO. Uh, and they were talking at, at one point, NVIDIA CEO touched uh, Ilya on the arm. And uh, Nier's marketing team spinned that to the absolute extremes. So first, they changed their profile picture and cover photo on Twitter to the screenshot of the touch. Uh, then all of their social media efforts uh, were about the touch. Uh, they were not speaking about the panel, they were speaking about the place that the touch happened. Uh, then a new shitcoin or near emerged. It was called uh, near uh, near video. Uh, and lastly, everybody that saw Ilya those days took photos with him uh, and asked him, "Can you please touch me on the arm?" And it was trending on Twitter. Everybody was putting photos with Ilya and saying, "I got touched by Nvidia CEO by proxy." Uh, from this, uh, Near did see some uh, increase in price, around five percent around this marketing campaign. But the shit coin uh, near Vidya went almost to zero, sadly for my portfolio. Uh, okay, and why do we need why do we need professionalism then? So they, their price spiked. Uh, you can say, okay, let's just go full digital mode. Uh, no, I think uh, professionalism is still definitely needed in the Web3 space. Why? So first of all, there is obviously high volatility in, uh, in the investment opportunities, but even more, we saw so many pumps and dumps, uh, rug pulls and overall scam. Add to that the overall anonymity of the space. So even uh, whales, founders uh, or developers, they're anonymous, they just have a nickname. So you cannot, uh, you cannot see the team, uh, you don't know who to trust, uh, it, is, uh, it is harder to be trustworthy if you are anonymous and in a scammy space. Uh, there is another way of approach, professional approach. So that is, for example, a clearly defined roadmap uh, and token utility, transparent team, and clean, uh, clear messaging and communication. Uh, two examples that I wanted to show today are Cardano and Cosmos. Uh, so, for example, Cosmos, they are very professional in their approach. Uh, they use only cookie cutter social media posts. And on the other hand, uh, Cardano, they are taking it like they're doing the textbook marketing. So, yes, maybe cookie cutter social media posts, but they are also introducing the, their team, showcasing them all of the time, participating in events. And what is uh, most importantly, they are educating their audience about blockchain, about crypto. Even though these projects are super professional and you would say, okay, any smart investor would choose this over a highly volatile meme coin, uh, these tokens didn't see basically any action since the last bull market. So how can we find that perfect balance? Uh, first thing is definitely education and awareness. I think if you are a project in Web3 and you have built some community, you have a responsibility towards that community to educate them and to empower them to make smart choices. So for example, if you are maybe a technology project, you can always uh, publish blogs or webinars or something like that, uh, explaining the technology. And even more importantly, if you are a crypto project, you need to empower your audience to make smart financial decisions. So it can be how to do your own research. It can be uh, how to recognize a good roadmap or anything, uh, anything like that. Uh, lastly, no, not lastly, also transparent communication. So if there is some scam in the place happening, you need to be the one to address this. You cannot wait uh, for your like audience to start messaging you in Telegram chat that uh, they think you are scamming them. You need to jump in front of it and with clear communication and with clear action, uh, show that you care about your users. And lastly, and what is becoming a trend now, gamification. So it can be done a bunch of different ways, but for example, staking and holding are a really good example. Uh, staking, uh, you can stake them and uh, there is a possibility of uh, making a loyalty point system or a tier system so people are more incentivized to stake. And for example, for holding, sometimes there are of course airdrops 
or mystery boxes or whatever. Uh, that all motivates people to uh, to stake and to hold and uh, motivates the degen inside of them. Uh, yeah, here are two examples. For example, Polkadot, uh, they made a blockchain academy and uh, also, yeah, uh, meme contests and overall ideatons, hackathons are a great way to engage your audience in Web3. So yeah, Web3 is the perfect place for marketers to have fun. There are so many new trends and breaking things. And yeah, I'll, I would just like to finish uh, with a message for every Web3 marketer out here. You are in such such cool field and you shouldn't be uh, just following trends. You should be setting them. Thank you. So is there any questions? Good. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Oh. <laughs> Uh, come to block split. There is a keynote started 15 minutes ago. I think. <laughs> no, I think uh, you should always uh, seek for somebody that is good with growth hacking, because everybody can make a social media post, uh, everybody can write a blog, but you need somebody that can uh, really strategize and somebody that is dynamic. Because, for example, as Solana's team, Ethereum gas uh, spiked, but it will not stay like that for long. They needed to be in the game. They needed to be proactive and make uh, make that video right away while it is still relevant. So I think in a dynamic space like this, it is very important to find somebody that uh, that is adjustable, dynamic, and uh, that has strategic thinking. Yeah. So like, as a developer, um, how do you gain that initial traction, like get the flywheels spinning, essentially, when you Ah, like what would be the initial? Uh, yeah, what do you do initially, right? Like, I've got ideas, but I know that if I don't get the flywheel spinning, it's just not gonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I would do, like first, 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 is definitely setting up social media accounts, making a landing page uh, with a blog that you can publish your vision and your like technology tutorials or whatever, and then later. So you said you are building maybe on Solana. Next thing I would do, I would reach out to Solana's team. I would say, hey guys, I did something cool. Can you please help me connect with people in the space? And then how it works in Web3, I have like 10 Telegram chats with our friends from uh, Web3. And th when there is some important announcement, uh, I send to them uh, the link to Twitter post and I ask, hi guys, can you please amplify? And we do the same for them. So that is, that is what I would do, yeah. No problem. Okay, guys, thank you. I hope you enjoyed and see you.